Hello and welcome to the video lectures for Math 085 at Bay College. This is section 2.1. We're going to look at uh, tests for divisibility. <coughs> we have three objectives here. The first one is to have a deeper understanding of divis division. We're not actually going to be doing too much division in this section, but we'll have a deeper understanding of it when, once we understand the next objective, which is to know the rules for testing divisibility. We're going to uh, define the rules for 2, 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. I've also included a few more because they're um, not too bad. The third one is to be able to apply these rules to whole numbers. All right, so we're going to move to the next board here where I've written down the divisibility rules. And the first one, if a number is divisible by 2. So this is our rule for divisibility by 2. The last digit of the number we're talking about must be even. And we know our even digits are 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. So if any number ends in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, it will be evenly divisible by 2. For the divisibility rule for 3, if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, then the number itself will be evenly divisible by 3. And what I mean by <coughs> excuse me, the sum of the digits is essentially we'll take each digit and add it up. If that final sum is divisible by 3, then the whole number is going to be divisible by 3. For our divisibility rule of 4, well, we could think of it in two different ways. It would have to be divisible by 2 twice, because 4 is 2 times 2. But there is a rule, and it says the last two digits of the number are divisible by 4. If the last two digits are divisible by 4, then the whole number will be divisible by 4. 5 is a pretty simple rule, and we may be familiar with that one. If the last digit of any number is 5 or 0, it will be divisible by 5. Now 6, 6 is actually a combination of 2 and 3. The rules for 2 and 3 have to apply. And just like we said 2, or for 4, it would be 2 twice, 6 is the product of 2 times 3. Since 6 would follow both of these rules, then we just apply these two rules if we want to know if a number is divisible by 6. 9, the sum of the digits is divisible by 9. Well, if we think about this for a moment and we think about 3, 3 times 3 is 9. If the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, then 9, which is two products of 3, the sum of the digit will be divisible by 9, which is two products of 3. Or we could think about it as it would be divisible by 3 twice. 10, the last digit ends in 0. Well, if we think about that one as well, 10 is 5 times 2. Well, 5 has to end in a 5 or 0 to be divisible, while this 0 shows in that factor of 10 because 10 is 5 times 2. So it does have that. So it follows a similar rule, but it's restricted to just the 0. Now, there is a divisibility rule by 11. But to actually write it out might be more confusing than to just show you. So in the next example, we'll actually apply all of these rules and see that they apply. So we're going to move to the next board here. And the question is, is 27,720 divisible by the following numbers. And what I've done is I've listed 2 all the way through 11. And we're going to test the visibility of that number by all of these. And I'll give you a heads up, that number is divisible by every single one of these numbers here. So <clears throat> the first thing is we're going to see if it's divisible by 2. Well, we look at the last digit, because that's what our rule says. Is this an even digit? Well, we know our even digits are 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. But we're just in the ones place, so 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. This is an even digit. 0 is considered even. So it is divisible by 2. So my answer is yes, this number is divisible by 2. Well, is it divisible by 3? Now, this needs a little bit of explanation, because when we talked about the rule of 3, we have to sum all the digits together, and its sum has to be divisible by 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the number 2, 
seven seven two zero twenty seven thousand seven twenty and I'm going to add up all the digits. That's what our rule tells us to do. Two plus seven is nine. Plus seven is sixteen. Plus two is eighteen. Plus zero doesn't change it. It's eighteen. Is eighteen divisible by three? Yes, it is. That tells me that this whole number is divisible by 3 evenly, because 18 would be 3 times 6. So the answer to this is yes. What about 4? Well, we talked about 4, and its rule says if the last two digits of the number are divisible by 4, then the whole number is divisible by 4. Well, if we look at the number, the last two digits is 20. 20 is divisible by 4 five times. So yes, it is divisible by 4. 5, the divisibility rule for 5 says it must end in a 5 or a 0. I look here, I see it divisible. It is ending in a 0, so it is divisible by 5. If we look at 6, is it divisible by 6? Well, we've already determined that it was divisible by 2. And we've already determined it was divisible by 3. So if it follows those two rules, because 2 times 3 is 6, then the number itself will be divisible by 6. Now, there is a divisibility rule for 7, but I did not introduce it. And I'm not going to introduce it in this video, because the rule is more complex than the actual time it takes to do the division. So let's review our division and take this number and actually do the division. Sometimes that's going to be the quickest way to find out if it's evenly divisible. So we, what that means is we don't want a remainder. So 7 goes into 27 three times. 3 times 7 is 21. We find that difference. And we get 6. We bring down the next digit. 7 goes into 63 how many times? Well. It's almost 70, which would be 10. And I know it's not 70, so I'm one less. 9 times 7 is 63. I find that difference to be 4. I bring down the 2. How many times does 7 go into 42? That would be 6 times. 6 times 7 is 42. I find that difference to be 0. But I still have one more digit. I've got to remember to bring that down. 7 goes into 0, 0 times. That's our rule of dividing 0. It's 0. So we get 3,960 with no remainder. That means it's evenly divisible. So even though that wasn't too complex, the actual divisibility rule for this would have taken even longer. So sometimes the digits, it's going to be easier to just do the long division. But we did find out that, yes, this number is divisible by 7. The next one is 8. Now, 8, if we think about it, when we talked about 6, we said, well, it's the product of 2 and 3. So that rule applies. 8, well, 8 is the product of 2 and 4. But we have to be very careful, because it has to be divisible by 4 and then by 2, or vice versa, divisible by 2 and then by 4. So let's actually do that for a moment. We're going to do a little bit of division, but I'm going to divide it by 2. Dividing by 2 isn't so bad. We just take half of the number. That's dividing by 2. So 27,720 divided by 2. 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into 7 uh, three times, which would be 6. Well, actually, I'm kind of skipping a step here, but hopefully you can follow. 7 minus 6 is 1. Bring down the 7. 2 goes into 17. 8 times, which would be 16. We subtract that. We get 1. We bring down the 2. 2 goes into 12 6 times. We find that difference to be 0 and 0. So we divided it by 2. Now I can just look at this and say, is this divisible by 4? Because 2 times 4 is 8. So if I look at 60, 60 is divisible by 4. It goes into it 15 times. So it's divisible by 2 and 4, but its quotient after 2 is divisible by 4. Now, another way to do it is to think about 8. And I know in a previous video when we talked about cubes, our perfect cubes, 8 is a perfect cube. So if I took half of the number, half of the number, half of the number, 
I would have found the quotient of 8, because 2 times 2 times 2 is the same thing as 8. So if I would have done this three times, I would have essentially done the same thing as dividing it once by 8. But dividing by 2 is easier than 8. We deal with smaller numbers. It's easier factors. All right, so we did determine that it is divisible by 8. And that was kind of a long, drawn out way. And that's why we didn't discuss the divisibility rules of 7 and 8. But now we're going to talk about 9. And we discussed 9 as a divisibility rule. The sum of the digits must be divisible by 9. It's similar to 3. So if we look at this, we already summed up the digits. Is 18 divisible by 9? It sure is. It's 9 times 2. So this whole number is divisible by 9. And we can see these rules. <coughs> excuse me, get us to the concept that, hey, I can divide by this number evenly if I know these rules. 10 was a very simple rule. If the number ends in 0, it is divisible by 10. Well, the number ends in 0, so it is divisible by 10. So now, 11. Now, we didn't discuss the rule because I said it's a little bit uh, easier to show than it is to explain. I'm going to take this number. Similar to what we did for 3, but the divisibility rule for 11 is subtract every other number and add every other number. So we'll start with 2. This one will always be positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. If we sum the, different, the sums and differences of the digits, this is the rule for 11. If we find the difference in sums of these values, it will always sum to 0. So 2 minus 7 is negative 5. And we've worked with negative integers before. Negative 5 and 7 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. That's a true statement. So if we change the sign of every other number and we sum it together, if it equals 0, then it's divisible by 11. So we found out it was. Hopefully, you won't come across this one too often because it's not the easiest of rules. But if you do, you have some concept of it. You can just change the sign of every other number and sum the digits. If it's equal to 0, the number will be divisible by 11. Just to give you a real quick uh, example of that, if I had 121, I know that 121 is a perfect square 11 times 11. But if I didn't know that and I wanted to know if it would be divisible by 11, I would just first digit would be positive, second digit negative, last digit positive. Sum them together. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. This number is divisible by 11. So that's our rule. OK, so now that you've been introduced to the divisibility rules, let's uh, Take a break here, watch the next video, and you'll see some examples of applying these rules of divisibility. Thank you for watching.